Welcome to a lesson on solving a system of linear equations using an augmented matrix. One application of matrices we will need is to solve systems of linear equations. This is best shown by example. Suppose that we have the following system of linear equations. Without changing the solution, we could swap equations in the system, we could multiply any of the equations by a non-zero number, and we could add a multiple of one equation to another. It turns out these operations always can be performed to find a solution. It's easier to write the system as a matrix equation. The system above can be written as a matrix equation shown below, where we have the coefficient matrix times the variable matrix equals the constant matrix. Remember, we can also refer to these column matrices as vectors. To solve the system, we put the coefficient matrix, which again is the matrix on the left side of the equation, together with the vector or matrix on the right, and get what's called an augmented matrix. Below we have the augmented matrix for the system of equations. And now we apply the following three elementary operations to determine the solution. Number one, we swap two rows. Number two, we multiply a row by a non-zero number. Number three, we add a multiple of one row to another row. We keep doing these operations until we get into a state where it is easy to read off the answer or until we get a contradiction indicating no solution or possibly infinite solutions. And we'll talk more about this later. We generally try to use row operations until the following conditions are satisfied. The first from the left non-zero entry in each row is called the leading entry. So the conditions are number one, the leading entry in any row is strictly to the right of the leading entry of the row above. Two, any zero rows are below all the non-zero rows. Three, all leading entries are one. Four, all the entries above and below a leading entry are zero. Once all these conditions are met, the augmented matrix is in reduced row echelon form. And below I have three examples of augmented matrices in reduced row echelon form. Recall when solving a system, there are three possible outcomes. We can have one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. If we have a system of three equations with three unknowns, and there's one solution, in reduced row echelon form, the augmented matrix will resemble this augmented matrix on the left. Notice how we have a main diagonal of ones. All the entries above and below the ones are zeros. This indicates there's one solution if the variables are x1 through x3, we have x1 equals three from the first row, x2 equals four from the second row, and x3 equals five from the third row. This type of system is consistent and independent. If the system has no solution, and it reduced to echelon form, the augmented matrix will resemble the form shown here in the middle. Focusing on row three, notice how we have zero, 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 five. This translates to the equation zero equals five, which of course is never true, this indicates there is no solution and the system is inconsistent. If there's an infinite number of solutions, in reduced row echelon form we have a row of zeros like we have here on the right. Again, a row of zeros indicates zero equals zero, which is always true. This indicates an infinite number of solutions. Row one indicates x1 plus two x3 equals three. Row two equals x2 equals four. Notice how we don't have a leading one in the third column for x3. x3 is a free variable, meaning it can take on any value. The infinite solutions can be expressed as x1 equals three minus two x3 and x2 equals four. Sometimes we introduce a new variable for the free variable, shown here on the right where we have x3 equals t, and therefore x1 equals three minus two t, and x2 equals four. This type of system is consistent and dependent. And now let's take a look at an example of writing an augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. So again, going back to the system of equations we started with, that's here on the bottom of the screen, we have the augmented matrix here on the top, and now I'll perform row operations to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Let's begin by replacing row one with one half times row one. This gives us a row of ones. Row two and row three remain the same. And now let's work on getting some zeros. To get a zero in row two, column one, let's replace row two with row two minus row one. And to get a zero in row three, column one, let's replace row three with row three minus row one. So replacing row two with row two minus row one, we have one minus one, which is zero, one minus one, which is zero, three minus one, which is two, and five minus one, which is four. 
and now replacing row three with row three minus row one, we have one minus one, which is zero, four minus one, which is three, one minus one, which is zero, and 10 minus one, which is nine. And now let's get leading entries of one in row two and row three. Let's replace row two with one half times row two and replace row three with one third times row three. Row one remains the same. Row two becomes zero, zero, one, two. Row three becomes zero, one, zero, three. For the next step, we will interchange row two and row three, as shown here. Now we're very close. We need to get a zero in row one, column two, as well as row one, column three. Let's get a zero in row one, column three, by replacing row one with row one minus row three. Notice by using row three, we don't lose the one in row one, column one, as well as the one in row one, column two. Replacing row one with row one minus row three, we have one minus zero, which is one, one minus zero, which is one, one minus one, which is zero, and one minus two, which is negative one. And now we need to get a zero in row one, column two. We can do this by replacing row one with row one minus row two. Because row two has a zero in column one and column three, we don't lose a leading one in row one. We also don't lose the zero in row one, column three. Row one minus row two gives us one minus zero, which is one, one minus one, which is zero, zero minus zero, which is zero, and negative one minus three, which is negative four. Now we have reduced row echelon form, and we can see we have one solution. The first row indicates x1 equals negative four. The second row indicates x2 equals three. The third row indicates x3 equals two. You may want to pause the video and verify that these values do satisfy the system of equations. Let's look at one more example. The following augmented matrix is in reduced row echelon form. The first row indicates x1 plus two x2 equals three. The second row indicates x3 equals one. Notice in the third row we have a row of zeros indicating zero equals zero. Zero equals zero is always true. This indicates we have an infinite number of solutions. Also notice we don't have a leaning one in the x2 column indicating x2 is a free variable, meaning x2 can take on any value. We know we have an infinite number of solutions, which we can express as x1 equals three minus two x2, and x3 equals one, or we can introduce a new variable for the free variable x2, and let x2 equal t, and therefore x1 equals three minus two t, and x3 equals one. On the other hand, if during the row reduction process, we come up with the augmented matrix below, focusing on the third row, we have zero, 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 three, which indicates zero equals three, which we know is never true, this indicates the system has no solution. So we can go ahead and stop here. The first two rows become irrelevant. I hope you found this helpful.